I was born and raised in Tatchby, California. I was brought up in a really strict Pentecostal family. As soon as I got to an age to where I could rebel, I did. I can remember at a very early age thinking that I would love to know what beer tasted like or because there was no alcohol in my household because they were very strict. Uh, I think my first beer was around age 11 and I think it was stole out of somebody's parents refrigerator and got a little taste of it and uh, you know I I don't really recall that I had any effect but I knew I wanted to do it again and so around seventh eighth grade <clears throat> I was with some high school kids and uh, I got enough alcohol in me to fill it and from then on I was off and running my whole life was about getting and drinking and finding pot and just anything that would get me high, I was off and running. So I took that as far as I could all the way through high school. I did graduate from high school, but just barely. And uh, I got a job where my dad worked right out of high school. And uh, you know, the only reason for me working was to have the money to buy beer and drugs. And so, I had a really nice car and I always had beer and drugs and that's what made me fit in with the kids in school was when I had beer and alcohol, they wanted to hang around with me. So, you know, I took drinking and drugs as far as I could, you know. Uh, I got married at 20 years old and I uh, was divorced by 24. There was uh, <clears throat> just nothing but substance abuse, led to some, you know, uh, domestic issues. And, uh, you know, we got married too young and just, you know, alcohol and drugs and relationships just don't work. And so we divorced and I ended up losing that good job. And uh, I just sunk into addiction from there on, you know, and methamphetamine came into play then in 1984 when I went through my divorce and it just overtook me like. Alcohol would take me out. I mean, I would drink to oblivion as they call it. I drink to a blackout. But with the methamphetamine, I would stay awake. But after I was awake and doing it for two or three days, I felt nothing. And I liked that not feeling anything, you know? And uh, I pretty much became a zombie. I took that until I ended up stealing a checkbook for my mom and forging a bunch of checks. And it was in around to Hatchby, everybody knew me, but I had, you know, I was named after my dad. So, you know, they looked at my ID and it had his name too. So they took the checks and, you know, I knew I was never gonna get away with it but I had to do what I had to do to get high. And I guess, you know, it was kind of a saving grace. I did a little time and did 30 days in jail and I went through a rehab in Tarzana and I got clean and sober and I was pretty much clean and sober for 11 years and then uh, was in another relationship and split up and uh, decided that maybe if I stayed off the drugs, that alcohol wouldn't hurt me this time. And so I ended up getting a six pack and drinking it that night. And the next day I got a half gallon of vodka and went back to drinking to oblivion. Then one of the guys I worked with was into smoking meth and we went out to a bar. I smoked some meth. We picked some up on the way home. And at that time I weighed way over 300 pounds. And within nine months, I weighed 195 pounds and was back in Lairdo. I'd like to say that was my last relapse, but it wasn't. But I got out of jail. I had to go through a sober living home for a year. And uh, I did, I got myself out of trouble, off felony, probation, all this stuff. And uh, got back with my wife and I decided I would try to go to church to stay clean. And I did for about a year and a half. And uh, 
You know, I, I couldn't tell you what sparked it, but one night I made up a lie to my wife and told her I had to go help a friend and I left and I was gone for four days and uh, right back on the meth again. That was probably in 2008 and I ran till about 2012. I woke up in a hotel room with a bunch of other guys just like me thinking, wow, it's come to this once again, you know? And by this time, I was 53 years old, you know, and uh, the doctors already told me that if I didn't put what I was doing, I was gonna die in like six months to a year if I kept what I was doing. And so uh, I just kind of prayed to God to help me, you know, one more time, God get me out of this. And he did, and uh, a friend of mine that I'd been sober with, you know, 20 some years earlier, got a hold of me on Facebook, friended me, and I kind of explained him what was going on. And uh, he said, well, why don't you come up here and stay with me for a while? And so I did, I went up there and stayed with him a month. And that was uh, February 6th, uh, 2012. And uh, I haven't had a drink or a drug since that day. I was involved in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous in the 12 steps and uh, as long, well for me, if I'm not working on recovery, I'm working on a relapse. There's no gray area for me. So when I get complacent in the 12 step group, I'm headed for trouble. I have a daily ritual. I get up, I hit my knees, I do my morning meditation and reading, you know, I hit uh, three or four meetings a week. I'm in contact daily with other alcoholics and addicts. That's, you know, all my friends pretty much nowadays are in the program. And so uh, it's pretty much my life. Well, for me, it's stay connected to God and to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and uh, other alcoholics and addicts, you know. I gotta stay with my people, I guess, you know. and. Uh, I don't know, I don't know why some people really struggle and some others don't, you know, you know, but I've been told that whatever you're going through, your story will be able to help somebody someday, so. Oh, I mean, my life today, uh, I think back about six and a half years ago where I was at, you know, uh, shuffling through the streets of Oildale with my whole life in a backpack, thinking I really had it going on if I had a big sack of dope or something, you know. Uh, to what it is today is just, you can't get there from here, you know. I mean, my life is completely different, you know. I was able to get <clears throat> clean and sober and get my life together, and then my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And so I think that God got me back to, uh, take care of her in her last days. So if you want to do this, you can, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. You know, you just got to stick to it.